Good morning, everybody. I want to do a, a video about a dream that I had, a very vivid dream. I haven't posted in a while on my website because we've been out of town a lot doing missionary work on how to be a better disciple for Jesus Christ. So now that I'm back, I want to do this dream that it was so vivid on October 11th, so it was recently, a couple weeks ago. I had a dream that I was in church and I hadn't I haven't been personally to like a regular church. The church that I used to go to it was an apostolic church, but I haven't been there like over a year. I think it's been almost two years that I haven't been there since I now just me and my husband teach Bible study at the college. We have a fellowship and read the word of God and worship God there. But we haven't been to a church church like, you know, like I used to do every Sunday, do the same routine. And then during the week, we used to do more study, study, study. I haven't done that in a, like at least two years now. But anyways, in this dream, I saw myself, my husband on my right, it was me in the church, and an older man and a little lady in front of me. And we were worshiping, I saw ourselves worshiping like this, you know, worshiping the Lord. And I knew it was a church because, first of all, we were worshiping, and I saw the church pews, the wooden church pews are very vivid in my dream and then I saw all of a sudden as I were worshiping like for a few seconds I saw this in my dream I see this old man get on, completely fall asleep on me and I was like I was like this leaning back because it, it was his weight was so heavy and I felt it like felt like I couldn't even breathe because he was so heavy on me and his wife the old, the old little old lady that was in front of him just kind of turned around and chuckled a little bit like she thought it was funny People in the church kind of looked at, looked at me and laughed a little bit. They giggled. But nobody was taking him off of me. And I didn't want to be rude and push him. And I was just like this, leaning like... I was looking at my husband like, please get him off of me. And he wasn't. And then finally he did. It took him a while for him to finally take him off of me. And because I gave him that look like, please take him off. So my husband in my dream took off the old man and placed him right next to me. Where he continued to be completely asleep. He wasn't dead, not, he was asleep in my dream. So he was asleep next to me. And then right after that scene, my, my, the same dream, I see that the old lady wants to help with her husband to get him up and my husband helps him. We both help him to get the, the old man up. He, they finally walk away. And then me and my husband walk behind them. And as we're leaving the church, all of a sudden I hear the same little old lady screaming at her husband he was a tall white man older man they looked like they were like in their 80s and she's yelling at her husband saying oh you disgusting um she called him a pig you disgusting pig you blank your pants she didn't say you she said you pooped your pants but she didn't say the poop word she said the sh word you know the curse word you pooped your pants loud i mean everybody could hear and I was like, what is going on? And I was behind them quite a ways, like at least six feet away. And I hear a bunch of people saying, gross. And all, I look around and people are covering their noses. They're gasping, like in disbelief, gossiping, like they couldn't believe what happened, you know. And in my dream, I see like, the little man embarrassed trying to go get out the door as fast as he could. And I see his bag beige pants soiled, completely soiled on the left side, you know, I could see that the, the, the pants were on the left going down. That's the part that was really soiled from the butt down. And he's going out the door and the wife after him yelling at him. And I'm like, what? like, I still can't believe what's happening because I'm, I'm just observing in my dream, I'm observing everything what's happening. And I look down and I see the poop, you know, that the old man did. It must've fell out of his pants, a big poop. And you know, I know some of you think it's funny. I've told this dream to my husband and my sister and they kind of laughed, but then they realized, wow, it's, it's like God's showing you a dream. Well, how the church it really is, it's dirty. And, and that's what I wanted to focus on right now. But that was the end of my dream, me looking down, looking at the soil, the poop. But it, it's to me, it's very direct dream, letting me know that the church is so dirty. His, people not the building because the church is the people but us as 
the body of Christ. We're supposed to be on uh, doing as much as we can for the Lord, yet we're dirty. You know, that's what the Lord's telling us, that my, the body of Christ is dirty. He's not talking about the sinners outside of the church. He's talking about the people that go and worship the Lord, that were dirty. You know, the people go, that go to church every Sunday. We are not doing what Christ called us to do. We're still living in sin, and then we go and go to church like hypocrites. We're soiled in sin. It wasn't talking about actually that was just poop. He pooped. He had an accident. No, it means we're soiled in our in our own sinful lifestyles. We are sinful uh, Christians, so-called Christians. You know that we're going to church every Sunday and acting like over here, like like we're holy and praising God and everything, but deep. Deep down inside, we're not. You know, we're, when we go home, we sin. Or whatever we do after church, we're sinning. And we're slumber. There's a, also because I dreamed that he fell asleep. We're slumbering in the church. We're falling asleep. You know, even when I went to this kickstart a couple you know, days ago, I just got back from San Antonio kickstart. I looked back and it was a man sleeping. I mean, practically snoring. He was sound asleep. So people slumber no matter what, whether it's a church whether it's a function but jesus is talking about christians we shouldn't be sleeping in the church us christians are are sleep to sin maybe he meant also there's a slumber where we just allow things to come into our church and we don't care we're like in a slumber we just let everything happen we go with the flow let's just let it go like i just found out that they're allowing uh yoga instructors to teach yoga in the church they're allowing that demonic spirit to come into our churches. They're allowing it to teach them there. Oh, because we meditate. We can meditate. No, you're not meditating on the Lord. You're meditating to a Hindu God. Yoga is Hindu. It's a Hindu, Hindu practice. And when you do the chakras, when you do the sun salutation, I mean, I know because I used to teach it a long time ago. Back in 2004, I taught it for three years, and it's all... It's all demonic. I didn't know that at the time, and but it, it, it is, it's very bad. And I tried to tell my friend that was teaching it along with me and she got upset at me. And to this day, she's still teaching. But I, I, I refuse to do that because it is, you're opening the door to the demonic room to come in. And then you're teaching. I didn't even know what I was teaching, but I was teaching them after all the exercises. I was even saying it in a Hindu way that I didn't even know. I was, I was saying the words. So when you're saying the words and the sun salutation, you're, you're praising and worshiping a God. You're not worshiping Jesus. You're worshiping the God. You're opening the door to whatever God you're worshiping. And you do these movements. And then you go into your other move. And then you say another word. And you're just repeating because that's what you're taught. I didn't know what I was repeating. But those are chakras. You're opening your, your third eye and allowing an evil spirit to come into your life. That's what you're doing. So they're doing this in churches. And then, then when you're done, they do empty your mind now. And, and they're teaching you to empty the mind. I know because I used to teach it. And so they, they're, it's, a, it's a teaching that it's very, very dangerous because you're, you're not with Christ anymore. You're, not, you're emptying the mind. You're emptying in everything. And you're allowing an evil spirit to come in. Okay, so I'm just letting you know it's very wrong. I know a lot of, and then now they're saying, this is how deceiving the serpent is. The evil spirits are the saying that it's not a Hindu. Now it's called Christian yoga. So they're, so they can allow it in a church. They're saying, oh, it's, it's a Christian yoga. It's okay. Cause it's called Christian. No, Jesus says you cannot be the light in the darkness. What does the light have with the darkness together? It's like an old wineskin with wine. You cannot make them work. You cannot do that. It's either or dark or light, which one you choose the path. You can't just combine it. Christians want to blend everything in and make it okay. It's okay because it's Christian. Let's just call it Christianity and, and then you can do yoga now. No, it's not okay. It's still yoga. Yoga is it's Hindu. It's a it's a it's a form of uh, meditating to their God, the serpent. So you, it's no, it's not okay. No matter if you put out what you call it, 
Even if you put Christian, I've heard other yoga instructors I try to tell here in my town that it's okay because they put Christian music. That makes it okay. You're still doing the same exercises. You're still doing the sun salutation. I don't even want to say the name because it's not good, but it's all these words that they put in it. They're still doing those forms of exercises. Even though you put Christian music, it does not make it okay. Again, cannot combine light and darkness. Another thing I heard that they're doing in the churches is doing Ouija boards that you pray to angels. Now it's called Ouija board games. But it's an angel now. You're not praying to the devil. You're praying to your angel. And it's the same kind of movements. And it's not. You're opening the door to the demonic realm. Remember, the devil can disguise himself to be the light. And it's not. It's the darkness. It even says in Galatians 6, don't be deceived. Even if an angel comes to you and tell, tells you a different gospel, don't believe him. It's... it's it, Paul warns us to, to be, he warns us many times. And Jesus warns us, and Peter warns, I mean, uh, Revelation, it's all in the Bible, warning us of the deceiving spirits. So that, and also the tarot cards, now they're calling it, it's kind of a, allowing it in the churches where these are just cards to open your eye to the spiritual realm, and it's not demonic, and just so many things that, I, I mean, I could not believe it. I'm seeing this. Or more and more and more now and then the Lord showed me this dream and now ever since he showed me the dream I've been hearing it more now and I'm like wow this is gotta I gotta warn the Christians out there the disciples for Jesus and the Christians that go to church every Sunday or they worship the Lord watch where you're going to church be aware because you don't know what's going on you don't know even if you say oh well I'm a Christian I'm a disciple for Jesus and I don't do none of this. My church doesn't do this. How do you know? Have you investigated what they do on weekends, on Saturdays, or during the week? Because even though you're not practicing yoga or you're not practicing this angel Ouija board, so-called, you're if they're doing it inside that building, they're bringing, they're opening the door to the demonic realm and you are going to get affected because you go there. So you just have to put the armor of God on over you and go find out if they're doing this and then let them know. Let the preachers know, the Sunday school teachers, whoever, whatever ministry you're in, involved, let them know that they are opening the door to something very dangerous. And God does not agree with any of that. It's in Deuteronomy, he talks about that, how he can't stand when they pray to other gods, when they worship idols and different gods and do the things that the evil do. He says, do not be like them. Be different. Stand out. Be Only worship Jesus. And that's it. Jesus Christ. And ask the Holy Spirit to give you discernment. Because it's, it's dangerous to do those things. Um, I already repented for teaching yoga back in 2004. I repented of all, all my sins. And I tried to warn my partners I did it. And it backfired. They no longer speak to me now. I try to speak to the ladies here because I, I substituted here where I live thinking it was still yoga was okay, you know, because I was brainwashed too that it was okay. But now the deeper and deeper I've studied and found, I found out it's very, very demonic, very dangerous. You're opening very bad spirits and it's a 20, I think, what is it, 10 or $20 billion industry and where so many people are doing it. Christians are so accepting of this because it feels good. And it's called Christian yoga, or they put Christian music, they think it's okay, and it's not okay. So I'm just letting you know that the church is very, very dirty, and God showed me a very vivid dream that it is dirty, and that we need to come out of that. He's like letting, letting me know, I think, so that I can tell, warn people in my YouTube channel, or Facebook, or wherever, to not get deceived. Read the Word of God. If you don't believe me, Read Ephesians, Galatians, the book of Revelation, uh, Deuteronomy. Read, read, read what Jesus said when he told his disciples that the world is going to get worse and worse like birth pains. Then you'll know I'm coming back soon, he said, because it is going to get worse before it gets better. I mean, it's not going to get better until the Lord Jesus returns and worse Christians will get persecuted for speaking truth. But we still, if we know right from wrong, we got to warn them. we got to warn our families, our friends, our children, our 
coworkers or whoever we know because they don't know you might, they might be teaching that 